1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 2. And in this episode of our season with Kyle Larson's number 42 Target Chevrolet, we are going to be completing race 10 of 36, which is going to take place at Talladega Super Speedway for the Geico 500. As you are watching this video, I am at Talladega Super Speedway. At least, I hope that I am. If I'm not, then that is very, very depressing. Uh, and also, I think this video comes out at the same time as the coverage beginning on Fox Sports for that Talladega race. So, why the hell are you watching this video? Go watch the Talladega race. I'm attending it. It's not going to be one to miss. The reason why I decided to go to the Spring Talladega race in 2018 is because the Spring Talladega race in 2017 was really good. And the one in the fall was in the playoffs, and that was a shit show because everybody had so much on the line. We only had 10 freaking cars finishing the race. So I'm like, I just want to see some genuine racing, and that is why I've decided to go see the spring race. Uh, been saving up since freaking September, like 700 bucks, and it's like probably $125 on gas. Then I had to save the money for like the $95 tickets and then the hotel room. And uh, in the end... It's all going to be worth it, as long as Kyle Busch does not win that race. Also, the standings are all the way down there at the bottom from the previous video, which was Richmond. I might as well just talk about that now, but yeah, we fell back to 8th place, even though we got a 5th place finish at Richmond. Kevin Harvick won the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd stages, dominated the whole thing after starting on pole in his Busch car. So, yeah, Kevin Harvick, what is going on? I don't even think he passed post-race inspection, but they don't have that shit in NASCAR games yet. I'm still waiting for them, too. And we don't really need to look through the point settings that much. But let's get to Talladega. Um, I should also mention what we're doing next weekend. Kansas and Charlotte. I think this Kansas race is going to be a night race. I remember the night race in 2017 was the first Kansas race. And that was where um, Eric Almarola got that very, very bad injury, if I'm correct. And then we got Charlotte. So yeah, our first night races of the season are going to finally come with Kansas and Charlotte next weekend. So we're finally going to see that Credit One bank pain scheme in both races next weekend. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or not that we're going to be returning to that paint scheme because last time I tried racing it, we, we just fucking destroyed the thing. Uh, Talladega Super Speedway. It's not going to be the same thing. You know, just driving around this track, you know, thinking I am at this track as the video is coming out. But let's do this. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The only NASCAR race I've ever been to was the 2003 Texas race in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, and back then I had a headache and a cold, and I actually slept through the large majority of the race, and then, and then I think a few months ago, um, I went on YouTube and looked back on the race, and it was actually a pretty darn good one. I think Elliot Sather won it, or maybe it was Ryan Newman. I know Ryan Newman had this challenge in NASCAR Thunder 2004, so it might have been Ryan Newman, but there was some other race that Elliot Sather won. I just remember um, that I was at the one that happened in 2003. So, um, yeah, I mean... This is actually my first actual NASCAR race that I'm going to be attending because I don't think I was attending the race in 2003. So we're not going to do qualifying because qualifying does not work at Super Speedways, making this a last to first challenge. And what better thing to do on the day of a NASCAR race that I am going to be at? This is just freaking mind-blowing for me. I am going to Talladega. Talladega is like paradise for someone like me all these freaking years. Just think Talladega. I would love to go to that track. And I'm there. I mean, to other people, it's like, it's not a big deal. I mean, well, you can go to Pocono or New Hampshire or some freaking cookie cutter half, one half mile track, and it's like, it's not as big a deal. Martinsville would be a big deal to me. Bristol would be a big deal to me. And Talladega, uh, the pack racing and everything just all being based on the draft and timing the moves. It's different for me. I ain't got to make any... No, no, no. <laughs> uh, skip session. Let's, let's get this race underway. Almost uh, went back to the freaking menus. Here we go. How long is the first stage going to be? I don't know this yet. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't do that thing where we just freaking lose the pack as soon as the freaking race starts because, I don't know, bias draft. Uh, I just don't want to be behind whichever lane checks up because we've always had a lane that checks up really bad whenever we start and restart races at super speedways. It happened at Daytona quite a bit. And I don't know if it's going to happen at Talladega. Here we go. There, there you go. You're doing it. Let's try to stay in the draft so I don't lose uh, any of these positions to actually make up. I'm going to try to work the bottom for the most part because that's what everybody wants to do. The bottom is superior most of the time. I mean, online, you got to stay at the bottom if you want to actually make progress. We're in 39th. Uh, somebody in that shit mobile behind us, that black card, he's um, not exactly getting going. 
kind of losing the draft already. He's getting a run on the outside. I don't know if it's going to be the Talladega races in this game where we can't pass the leader or if it's going to be one of them races where we get up to the front really quickly. But right now, I'm not getting that big of runs. Nothing's really happening with me. We've got time. We've got six laps in the first stage. We're trying to find a place to go to make a pass on Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy. That's an interesting name. I don't know. He had a... I think it was his dad, Randy LaJoy, was in NASCAR Thunder 2002. I don't even remember what car he raced. I think it was a Bush Series car, but... Yeah, there was Randy LaJoy in NASCAR Thunder 2002, and I did a season of that back in 2017. It's actually right about the time that um, I'm playing this game on my channel. We um, were somewhere like halfway through. We're finishing up the uh, NASCAR Thunder 2002 Let's Play that I did a year ago. kind of amazes me that... Um, it's been a year since I was playing that game. At the same time, we're doing Spider-Man 2, and that was just fucking torture. It was very entertaining torture. You guys probably would love to just watch it if you haven't seen it yet, but oh my god. Spider-Man 2, like, that stripped so much sanity from me. Like, more sanity than you could possibly imagine. Uh, you know, as much as it might seem so awful that I am not making up any positions right now as we race at Talladega Super Speedway in this freaking Let's Play, I'm at Talladega Super Speedway, so I... I don't even want to bother complaining. I'm just thinking about it. Thinking about the fact that I'm at this track that I'm racing at right now. That's not something that I'm usually able to say. Uh, and then you got other people, you know, like Joseph Lombard goes probably. Oh my god, someone's breaking down. Someone's breaking down. I have to use the apron. Uh, this is not legal. This is not legal. This is immigrant levels of legal. You just drive a freaking apron. I gain a bunch of positions. Okay, that's what I get for having patience, but. As I was saying, Joseph Lombard usually goes to like five or six NASCAR races in the Cup Series a year, so, I mean, to him at this point, it's probably a common thing, and it doesn't blow his mind as much to just simply be at a racetrack that he's only raced at in video games, but to me, it's kind of different. And I think of other people, um, what if racing goes to Pocono a lot, Dale Reynolds goes to New Hampshire a lot, and, you know, Pocono's my favorite track, and I like racing at New Hampshire in the video games, but I'm not going to just sit here and pretend that... Pocono or New Hampshire create the best freaking racing you could possibly imagine. It's only good racing if you're there at the track and you can hear the rumble and, you know, capture the experience from first person perspective. Or second person, whatever. Uh, Talladega is a whole different deal. I feel like that's the kind of thing everybody dreams for, just like Daytona. If I'm being honest, I think Talladega can create better races these days than Daytona does, because Daytona, it's more of that, um, so much on the line deal because it's a Daytona 500. I mean, it's not the playoffs and people trying to win the darn race so they get locked into the next round or whatever. But I don't know why it was changed so much whenever they had that playoff round last year at Talladega Super Speedway. That was awful. Dale and R. Jr. kept his car for so long, you know, unscratched and whatever, and he finally got a little damage on it. But all in all, he could never get to the lead and, you know, actually do what he was trying to accomplish. I think he did a few times, but uh, he figured with how well he was, the condition he was keeping his car and that he would have actually won that race. And I told myself in a Q&A that Dylan Jr. would not win more race before the end of his career. And he didn't. I just didn't feel like he had it in him, even at a super speedway. And it kind of showed at the Talladega race. I'm not hating on him. It's just the person feel like it wasn't something that he had in him anymore. It was just kind of a wreck the car some days, other days make a, a, a priceless mistake or some shit like that. The Talladega super speedway, he did a great job avoiding, like, every single freaking wreck. I don't even remember which wreck it, it finally was, which caution it finally was that he actually got a little damage on the car, but I do remember him finishing the race. And Brad Kozlowski kind of made a tribute car of some sort, and he won that race. I'm trying to get underneath Daniel Suarez. Are these guys pitting? No, they're just... It's like online racing. They're all hugging the inside. This is awkward. This... I don't want to see this at Talladega Super Speedway. That will kind of drop my overall experience. Like, I won't feel like I get my money's worth we're getting freight training. Just one single lane of freight training. I don't want any of that Talladega Super Speedway. And if any at all, I don't want it to really last. I just want to see side-by-side -side racing, moves, crazy blocking done by dumbasses like Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson over here. Uh, so, that was a caution right there. Was that the end of the stage? Uh, yeah, I think it would have been the end of the stage. It was only six laps. Everybody's pitting, so we're going to just get four tires and a full tank of fuel. I actually didn't need to get any tires, but I did, and we still held our position. I almost ran out of time taking pit stop because I was too busy talking my freaking head off. But I do that. Freaking rambling on. So annoying. 
God, I'm such a waste of semen. I can't believe I exist. I talk so freaking much. It's just it's drives me crazy. I'm kind of, you know, emulating people that I went to school with. People that got annoyed by me talking. Uh, you know, I actually got to the point whenever I was in high school where I was like, I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to listen to music. And so that was how I became an introvert. I think right around freshman year, uh, maybe 10th grade, somewhere in there, I just quit talking to people. I quit hanging out in the place. It just didn't work. I could only like become friends and hang out with one person in particular. And it was multiple people, a group. I just, I couldn't make that just ginormous connection, to be honest. I'm rambling right now and just talking about whatever because, yeah, I mean, I don't want to focus too much on the race because then I'll be too good. <laughs> whatever. Arrogance. Egotistical. Martin Trex Jr. stereotype. I once heard from somebody that Martin Trex Jr. is arrogant. Like, what the hell are you talking about? To be honest, I think any sign of him being arrogant is really just him being happy that he succeeded. He says that they worked so hard, and it's not like they didn't. Uh, he earned his championship in 2017. He was the best driver out there. He had the freaking playoffs that could possibly kept him from winning it with all that dominance, but nope. He was so freaking down that he won despite the playoffs set up thing. Man, Kyle Busch was right freaking behind Mark Trek Jr. back in the, uh, the final race of the 2017 season. And Kyle Larson almost let Kyle Busch win the uh, 2017 season. But he kind of got in his way. He was, I'm just going to compete. I'm going to race. It makes me a hypocrite because I was like, I'm actually kind of glad that Kyle Busch is getting held up by Kyle Larson right now. I don't know if he was exactly holding him up, but he was certainly playing a factor in the fact that Kyle Busch was having problems getting to the Martin Trex Jr. making that pass happen. Meanwhile, uh, stage two is also six laps, and we're halfway through there. We're in the top ten. We're going to get some stage points in this one as long as I don't make no stupid moves. I say that as I make it three wide halfway through the freaking race. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see if I can win the stage. I, mean, I can't do that if that thing with the leader where you just simply can't pass them happens. I hate it whenever they do that. It's just so freaking stupid. I'm going to not take tires in my next pit stop in this race because I just know the fact that um, it's not a good idea to do that whenever you don't even really need your tires to do well at super speedway in this game. Now, if you're going for a long run, I mean, eventually you're going to have to take tires, otherwise you're just going to start actually getting tight, which is ridiculous for a super speedway, but that's something that was uh, more apparent in NASCAR than they told us that you could wear your tires out at a super speedway in that game. It's kind of stupid, but uh, it does include strategy there. I watch people play career mode in like NASCAR Thunder 2004, and they'll be trying to use strategy. They'll choose two tires at NASCAR, at uh, Daytona and Talladega and whatever, or they'll like, I'm not taking four tires and stuff like that. And usually I don't take tires at all. I just spend the whole race not getting tires because in my rookie season of my career modes, it's always like, I don't need tires to not blow my tires. They kind of just make it through the whole freaking race. And overall, it's making as much time as I possibly can. I never take tires in my rookie season whenever I'm doing career mode in that game. We're in second place. Johnson's right in front of us. I'm going to try to get a run and get underneath him. I'm going to turn three if I can. We've got these guys behind us. He's going high, so I might be able to get a run just before the corner begins. I don't know. It's taking me a while to develop this. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Ugh. Can I side draft him? Is this working? Oh, please don't be this one, one of them races. No. Like, my car actually be powerful enough to finish a pass. Like, none of that nonsense. I think so. We're at least going to lead the fifth lap of stage two. I think we actually clear Jimmy Johnson, so all I got to do is block, and we can win the second stage of this race. Yeez. Yeez. Ugh. Did I ever win a stage in this season? I don't remember. I know I've won two races, obviously, but did I ever win an actual stage? Why is my car fadangling through turn one and two? That is probably the fourth time I've used that word in the existence of my channel, and I, I think it's a word. I don't think I'm saying it right. I think it's fandangle, not fadangle. But I don't even know what fandangle means. I don't even know what the actual meaning. I'm just throwing it in there and pretending I know what it means. Uh, I think I learned it from, like, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, some skateboard trick. No, you don't. No, Jimmy. No. No, I'm going to run on the outside. And, oh, here comes Eric Jones making a move at the bottom, and I didn't give him time to get there, so we're just going to wreck everybody as we come to the end of the second stage. 
Well, we finished where we started. Jimmy Johnson, that was not necessary. You damaged my car more than I already was. Some weird crash physics going on here. Uh, I'm at Talladega, can't be pissed. Oh my god, look at Ryan Newman go. But, man. I just wanted to win the second stage. I was so close to winning the second stage. But these guys get runs on the outside. I can't get run on the outside for the life of me. Okay, we're not taking two tires. I actually might as well because I have to repair these damages. So, four tires, full tank of fuel, and repairs and everything. We're still in 17th place. Like, I don't lose positions. This game is so freaking bipolar. Oh, my God. You go to the truck series, and I change four tires, get a get um full can, full can, full tank of fuel and all that shit. And I don't repair damages, but I lose all those freaking positions. But here, I have to repair damages, get four tires for no reason, just because I have might as well do it whenever I'm repairing my damages and getting a full tank of fuel, and I don't lose anything. I don't know what's going on. We need actual pit stops under caution. None of this stupid skip over it nonsense where you don't actually see what happens. I feel like if they actually had the pit stops under caution so you could actually see them, then things would actually happen. You know, you'd come out elsewhere every time. Uh, golly, what is going on? The whole freaking outside lane just assassinated us. I don't know. Look at him go! What is happening? I don't understand. I was in 17th, now I'm in 22nd. Make that 23rd because Danica Patrick has so much freaking horsepower. And we're like, oh shit. Also, while I'm seeing it, Aspen Dental is the sponsor on Danica Patrick's car, and near where I work at, I don't tell people where I work because that's like one of the most personal things to me. Um, for as far as information I don't want to let out on YouTube, there's this, where I work, um, there is. Aspen Dental, and Aspen Dental just got built there. It's like, I think, two minutes away. I just want to throw that in there because I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to the Acadian Dental place that I always go to, some other place that's been there for years. I'm going to start going to Aspen Dental because, uh, Danica Patrick, the Danica, is going to be my new dentist. Uh, so while I'm talking all this nonsense, looks like our final stage is going to be like 10 laps or something like that. I'm trying to make my way back up the field. You know, if I had just simply won the second stage, we would have taken our pit stop and come to the restart in first place where we finished. I probably could have been blocked to dominate the final stage and win the race, getting a win and a top five, which is you know, two top five as well this weekend. But it's still possible. We've still got time to make all these passes. It's just it's taking longer than it did last time, if you ask me. Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Chase Elliott three wide down the back stretch. I'm trying to make it four wide because I'm a dumbass. There's nothing new there. I'm going to help Joey Logano because I like Joey Logano. I don't know when to help. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Chase Elliott. Get off the apron, Jason. That's not smart. We're actually not getting there right now. Like, I'm not actually moving forward. I'm just dropping forward and then dropping back. Dropping forward. I don't even know what that means. Like, we're going forward, then we're dropping back. It's just a switch of the draft. It's actual, you know, super speed racing compared to reality with the way we're all moving about. You know, people are actually competitive. It feels more balanced at the moment. Golly, they keep checking up and slowing down. And at this rate, it's going to take me 15 laps to get to the lead. I don't have 15 laps. Now I've got uh, six and a half laps, if I'm counting that right. I'm trying to get going. I'm trying to get a run and keep getting runs. Cars getting all over the place going in turn three a bit. Come on, keep it in the trap. Logano, I helped you. I helped you. Stay in front of me so I can trap. I gotta use the slip streaming, whatever. I got a big run. I'm gonna portray Logano, my favorite driver. He's gonna be stupid. He figured that I want Joey Logano win at Talladega, but he's already done that like, what, three times? Two times? I don't know. So, I'm going to Talladega. I'm actually wanting Chase Elliott to win because I feel like he's been in the position to win at Super Speedways quite a few times already. It's just... Chase Elliott, stop blocking so fucking much. <laughs> I mean, lay off. You, you block so freaking much that you, you get taken out of the race before there's even 20 laps to go. The same goes for Kyle Larson in some cases, but uh, Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, they're just... Oh, God. Oh, God. That happened. I got a heart attack. Does that mean I'm going to lose the draft now? Wait, were we all going to have to take a second, uh, a third pit stop in this race? 
during the uh, final stage. Press O. Five laps. Lap are we on? Huh. I think we're going to make it to the end. I don't think I need to take a pit stop because even if I run out of fuel, I can still go to the line. Well, we were close. We were close. We were close to being able to bullshit our way to winning at Talladega. And now we got a pit. And everybody else has already pitted. So, uh, no tires. Um, we'll get half a can of fuel. And I'm not repairing damages. Uh... I love this game. So much. I love this game. Uh, uh, I'm all up in this game. Oh my god. Who's too good to be true? Who's too good to be true? These guys just can't get down pit road without doing something stupid. It's, it never ends. Any freaking NASCAR game you play, there's always something wrong with pit road. Some kind of glitch. Some kind of yoga. Some kind of driver exiting pit road is basically a caution because they're sideways and right at the end of it. Or, uh, or the guys are too fast going to pit road in comparison to you, but they can still go right in as fast as they want to and run you over and force you to speed with that penalty and whatever. Uh, I don't know. Well, I had to start on the outside, so I'm not, practically not able to actually make up positions. White flag, one lap to go. I'm in 27th. They screwed me over. Maybe I should have not hit it. Was that would that have been a good idea? I don't know. Maybe it would have been. Maybe I could have won this race if I just decided not to take a pit stop. But I don't know if I would have had enough to make it to the end. Because the thing is, I think I still would have run out of gas. And if you run out of gas when you're surrounded by other lead lap cars, then you're not going to win the race. You're just going to get flown right past. I mean, I'm trying to keep moving forward get a few more positions, but damn, Clint Boyer. Now Cole Witt's passing me. Anybody can pass me. Hey, free passes, free positions. You can have everything you want. Uh, I'm for, Cole Witt wasn't even a position to my surprise. At least I think that 72 car was full with. Uh, I beat my previous speed rating of 102. I don't know why I'm just now doing that, but... That was... Well, it's not our worst finish of the season. That would have to go to Atlanta, right? I was going to win the race. And then... You know what? That's fine on you. If I can have my luck in the game, I can have my luck in my car on my way to this freaking racetrack. Joey Logano won the race and also won one of the stages. I think it might have been the second stage. Either that or the first one. I don't know which because Clint Boyer, he finished 27th and he got a stage win as well. I didn't even know about that. I mean, this is not like the, the race that we had yesterday where Kevin Harvick won every single freaking stage just pulled away the whole time. That can't even happen at Talladega. Also, this freaking... Finishing order is so fucked up. Chris Buescher, Joey Gase, Trevor Bain, DJ Kennington. So I might not have lost that much ground just because of how screwed up it is. But honestly, I don't think I should have pitted. I think I could have won this race if I had not pitted. Oh, oh I'm so salty. And it's all my fault. I feel so stupid. Also, Recky Sinaus Jr. missed out on 27 laps in this race, and someone else missed out on 18 laps, and I'm not even going to bother waiting to find out who it was. We're still in 8th place in the point standings, but we got ourselves, what is that, a 30-point a gap on Matt Kenseth because of probably how far we finished behind him. I mean, we didn't lose that much ground. I'm pretty sure that's just because of how freaking screwed up the results got with the caution that came just before the end of the race. We really didn't need that. If they could just get down pit road, fine, under the green flag. They need to fix that in NASCAR 8 through. Uh, make it so they can get down pit road under the green flag. It's hard enough for us as it is, but them, I don't even know. They got me in the background getting involved in that wreck earlier. I ran the fastest lap in this race with a 48.18. Uh, most laps goes with Joey Logano, so 
I guess he was out front for quite a while, especially towards the end of the race. He might have won the second stage, now that I think about it. And Joey Gay started 34th and finished in third. Yeah, my ass, that's bullshit. And tough break goes to Ricky Sanhouse Jr. Started first and finished in 40th. Wow, that's that's a very unfortunate circumstance. Once again, I feel like that's happened before. Someone started on pole, finished dead last in this season. If one of these Talladega races had to be bad, it might as well be the one that you just watched because the the actual Talladega race that I'm going to be attending is by far much, much more important than this nonsense that's going on on my channel. Uh, it's an overall happiness of the world situation. Next weekend, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to Kansas Speedway for the Go Bowling 400 race 11 of 36, a night race just like the Charlotte Motor Speedway race, the Coca-Cola 600 race 12 of 36. This race right here was the first win that Austin Dillon got in the NASCAR Cup Series. And I love the paint scheme that he won it in. These days, I don't exactly like Austin Dillon as much as I used to. I mean, I never really liked him to begin with, but I was like, yay, three-car victory lane. And now it's like, yay, he, he dumped the leader on the last lap of the most important race of the season. I don't know how to feel about this. It was an accident, but still, <laughs> I can't be happy about it as much as everybody else wanted to be. Joey Logano was our new points leader, by the way. Uh, because he got three wins, and he's actually being rather consistent, and I haven't even noticed, but Jimmy Johnson fell back to second, Kyle Busch third, Martin Truex Jr. fourth. This is weird. Um, we have no Toyota winners. I mean, Joey Logano Ford, Jimmy Johnson Chevy, uh, Bragislavski Ford, Kevin Harvick Ford, me and Chevy, it's a Ford Chevy. Why is Toyota not doing good in 2017? Now, they they won more races than like what any other manufacturer in 2017. I know for the most part it's Martin Trek Jr., but Martin Trek Jr. ain't got any wins, and we're freaking 10 races into the season. That's something I'm just now noticing because that's how oblivious I am to what's going on in my Let's Play. But, huh, that's uh, weird. Hopefully Martin Trek Jr. wins some races before the chase begins. This is kind of ridiculous. It's reminding me of how William Byron couldn't win a freaking race for ages, uh, but he had a lot of consistency. Okay, then. Hopefully the uh, Talladega race that's going on right now is going on much better than what the hell that just was. I'm going to go ahead and switch into the Credit One Bank Chevrolet because that's what we're going to be using next weekend. See you next time. That's that and episode over.